It's my great pleasure to introduce Jordan Martinez. She's a sales representative at Simon & Schuster Canada. She focuses on print sales across all genres and formats, as well as ebook and e-audio sales. Previously, she was the sales assistant at SNS Canada and interned at both BookNet Canada and eBound Canada, and she was definitely an all-star at uh, BookNet. She's a grad of Western University and Humber College's Creative Book Publishing Program. Jordan is a lover of big data, spreadsheets, and Star Wars. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my bio that's not quite covered in just the you know, details of where I worked before. You already know I'm a sales rep at Simon & Schuster Canada, but I thought I'd tell you why I chose sales when I got into publishing. So my first internship was at eBound Canada, where I learned to build relationships with publishers and the value of really good metadata. My second internship, internship was at BookNet Canada, and I le learned there to love data and learn from the information that BookNet was gathering. I contributed to reports like the State of Digital Publishing in 2015 and the Canadian Book Market 2015 report. I also wrote blog posts where I looked at how readers feel about things like subscriptions and bundling. Also speaking of Star Wars, I got to make this super cool infographic about book sales and Star Wars following the announcement of Episode 7 because obviously we all want to know how books were affected by Star Wars announcements. Um, but the important part about my two internships is that I realized that while my love of reading and books got me into publishing, my understanding of numbers, patterns, and my appreciation for Excel were all things that would propel me to be successful in this industry. I thought the only thing I had to offer was my love of books, but there is a whole world of numbers that I learned to value, and that's where my sales skills started to evolve. So let's start with the numbers. BookNet taught me to take a step back and look at the whole picture, and then dive in and look at the finer details. As I mentioned, I'm currently a sales rep, so the focus on data and how it works has come in handy. So I'm going to give you a short overview of the basics of sales for those in the room who work in other departments and might be here to learn about the sales process in order to understand their sales team, or for other departments who could use these tools for things like marketing or acquisitions. And also so that we're all on the same page about what I consider when I'm going in to sell a book, just in case it's different from what other salespeople do. So most often when we're talking about numbers and data in publishing, it's about comparative titles and the author's previous titles. These numbers give you and your buyer an idea of what the sales track might look like for the book that you're trying to sell. So when we look at a title and we're trying to come up with a number to pitch to our buyer, this is generally what we look at. From the bottom up, we start with the author's backlist titles. These help show the popularity of the series or author and give you a good base for where to start your numbers. That's the foundation of what we build from. The previous titles will tell us that if we sell book 19 in a series, what it might sell if it sells the same way as the previous 18 titles did. The next level that we look at is a list of comparative titles that form a picture about the book. It adds information like telling the buyer about the content, format, or the direction the, storm is, the, direction the story is going. This is especially helpful if an author is branching out into a new genre or shifting their focus from what they usually do. Of course, it's great if you can find a comp for an exact comp for the situation. The same price, format, pub date, and author would all be very helpful, but that's not usually the case. So we build our comps to share this information, and we use that to adjust our suggested buy numbers up and down based on how those books sold. The last bit of information we use is something I'll talk more about later, but it's looking at content, the quality of the book, and using that gut instinct we have to determine whether the book could be the next big thing. We're in this industry because we love books, and I like to think that as a salesperson, I have some instincts when I read a book about how to position it. So when I'm putting together my pitch, I like to leave a little room in my book sell as part of my book selling that includes passion and enthusiasm for the book itself. And this is a good spot to mention non-book comps. If I had a dime for the number of times I've heard, this book is Black Mirror meets something, I would have a lot of money. But it makes sense because people are consuming a lot of content these days. Between podcasts, popular YouTube channels, and Netflix, I've heard from my buyers that this helps to contextualize the information and the content in the book and to know what show or movie it's like. This offers more information than numbers alone, and there's often merchandising opportunities based on popular shows or movies. Other things to consider include the work that your coworkers are doing, like marketing and publicity. A marketing campaign adds a lot of values to sales. It adds eyes on the book, helps with word of mouth, lets consumers know the book actually exists. Publicity is also crucial information with author tours, reviews, and media coverage. 
This will help sell your book once it's in the market. And this is information that should be brought to your selling appointments and communicated to your buyers. There's also data to be found with your coworkers. Talk to publicity about the bestseller list. If it's an author that was on the list, you can find out how long it was on there and what number it was at. You can also find out whether they have an inkling of whether this book might make the list and if it has a chance. Marketing also has a plethora of information you can use. Ask them about click-through rates and impressions on social media posts and ads for books with similar subjects. Ask about the author's media social media platform. How many followers do they have? Are they engaged with other authors and readers? Of course, we leave room also to consider the physical book itself. How is the package? Is it priced competitively? If it's nonfiction, is the topic timely? If it's fiction, is it a popular or growing category? All of these questions will change the suggested buy number you're putting together, sliding it up or down, but it's also adding to your argument about why this book is worth buying. So these three bars on the slide are the main considerations when putting together a database pitch, but keep in mind all the other points to the right add to your pitch and your presentation. So once we have our list of authors backlist and comp titles, we have to put together an actual number to pitch. We do this by looking at sales in various channels of the backlist and comparative titles and doing some forecasting to determine what this book might sell. This is tricky because publishing is a returns-based business and there is some accuracy involved. But it's important to take chances and let that top bit of the puzzle where you sell the book based on its own merit influence your selling. Looking at these comp titles and author's backlist reports, finding out marketing and publicity plans, and setting by numbers based on comps or backlist is the absolute basics of what your sales team does on a regular basis. And most often, that's all that's necessary. Lots of books are very easy to sell, and comps provide more than enough information to sell in. So now that we've established that, we're going to look at how titles sell that are more complicated. So this is where big data comes in. Big data is especially helpful when it comes to titles that are harder to predict. Things like news-based books that are especially timely, or gauging how big a celebrity is, these things make it harder to forecast. I don't know who had the first book by a child YouTuber, and I don't know what they used as comp titles. So this is the kind of thing that I like to use when I'm looking at things that are a little bit out of the norm of what we usually sell. There are titles that come out every year that are so unique that it seems like there's no data, but there is secret data, so I'm going to share that today. And I know it's cliche, but I am going to define big data, because I think that's useful information. So the definition of big data is extremely large sets of large data sets that may be analyzed computationally to reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions. So my interpretation of this is that there's a ton of information available online and out in the world, and this can really help, your, help sell your book. There's so much information, we often get computers to analyze it for us, but it still provides us with a lot of information just within their uh, analy analytics. So with all this available, it's difficult to sift through and see what's relevant and what isn't. So I've come up with a few ways to sift through all of this data, and I hope that this will help sell your book, whether you're an indie publisher or a multinational. So the first big data tool I like to use is publishing specific, which makes it a really great starting place. I use this to build a foundation for my number. If I need a starting place to see how many units I might sell of a title that's being acquired or that I'm trying to sell. And it's BookNet. Uh, so the Canadian Book Market Report is put out by BookNet once a year and details sales in all markets. It's a huge report with tons of information, and it's absolutely worth having this printed in beside you or pinned to your desktop. Sales are broken out by subjects. They go into each top BISAC, and you can see the top 10 titles by format uh, and tons of other useful information on there. So here's what I look at when I'm selling a title and I need some help. I look at the top 10 title section where I can see if I think I have a bestseller on my hands, likely the maximum I might sell in a year if this is as good as or better than what's listed there. This helps because I now know that this number is a possibility for the genre. So for example, in pets, uh, in 2017 we can see what the top titles were for this section uh, in hardcover and in paperback. I can also see which formats per performed best and consider that when I'm thinking about my title. Alternatively, for law titles, the top number for this section will be very different. So I have a different foundation for my numbers based on what it is I'm trying to sell. This is especially useful for books coming out in subjects that you're unfamiliar with, or ones that are aiming for an audience that's not specifically for book people. So celebrity memoirs, especially ones that are not film stars, these are hard to gauge. But the Canadian Book Market Report has details on what kind of numbers people are buying for each of these categories. And so we know that math books might not necessarily be exactly what you expect for book buyers, but there are still thousands of people who buy books on that subject. I also look at the format distribution section. 
Uh, this helps to make a case about whether the format of the book that I'm trying to sell is popular or common within that category. Same goes with the average or medium pricing section. This is a good place to check if the price of the book that I'm selling is falling within the market's average or medium prices for that category. And finally, I peek over at the market analysis report, uh, section of the report. I want to know if this category is getting bigger or smaller over the last two years so that I can include that in my pitch if it's relevant. Knowing how much competition you have will inform the way you pitch the title. So I know that BookNet has tons of presentations and help manuals on their report, so I won't go into more detail on how to use their reports or how to use sales data. But I will say that if I'm looking for really specific publishing-based data, uh, BookNet has tons of reports that you can run on your own, and there are tons of people there uh, who can help run reports for you. So highly suggest talking to their contacts there. I am a little biased, but I love them. Uh, so definitely go through their blogs, get a little bit more information, and think about how that might help you in selling your book. So while doing extra research on your titles, remember that this is also information that your buyers will be interested in. So share what you learned during your research and show your work so that your buyers can come to the same conclusion as you, or they can help you contextualize things. So between all of these backlists and comparative titles and the reports that BookNet has to offer, we might have exhausted the publishing specific tools that we have to look at extra data, but there is still more we can learn and there's even bigger sets of data that will help you figure out how to position your title. So Google Trends. This is one of my favorite secret, secret weapons. This is an excellent tool that will tell you what the Canadian pop population or other regions are searching for and whether the popularity in that subject has shifted recently. It can show you comparisons between the popularity of the subject by countries or provinces or time. So for example, it can tell you whether over the last five years more people have searched for books like Fifty Shades or books like Harry Potter. And spoiler alert, uh, Harry Potter wins by 7% more searches. So of course we use these tools understanding that popularity in a subject doesn't exactly relate to book sales. We, it doesn't result in book sales necessarily. But at the very least, we have some information here about whether or not to acquire in a, book, a book on a subject or by a celebrity, or on whether the Canadian, Canadian population is going to be interested in the subject matter. So this is useful for a lot of departments, from acquisitions and sales to marketing and publicity. It can also inform you about changes in the marketplace. For example, the growing popularity of audiobooks in the last 15 years. We now know this is one of the fastest growing parts of publishing right now, and looking at this growth is impressive. And we've been attributing a lot of the growth of audiobooks to the podcast generation. So I wanted to show you how we can look at this data in Google Trends. So the growth of podcasts has been huge in the last 15 years, and while the growth of audiobooks hasn't had the exact same growth as podcasts in terms of search trends, the correlation is still there. Looking at these two search terms together is a good example for looking for similarities between growth or decline in a subject and gives you a lot of information about the marketplace. It's also a useful tool for more, mar more publishing specific search terms rather than just looking at shifts in the market. So I wanna go through a couple of, of examples of Google Trends and how they can be useful in publishing. The first, one I, the first one is using it to show how much interest there is in a particular subject. This can include searches for that genre, like historical fiction, which we can see here has remained mostly steady since 2004 with a slow increase in popularity. So while you can search for actual genres and subjects, you can also search for something a little bit more casual, like what people might actually be typing. So things like books for tweens, which we can see here has had a lot of growth in the last few years. And this is building a picture for you and potentially for your buyer that you can use to increase or decrease your number. You can also search for authors and see how their popularity has grown or changed and figure out where their spikes are and how much things like movies based on their books contributes to the, their increase in popularity. So for example, this search for Stephen King shows a huge spike when the movie It came out in September 2017. So these have all mostly been single search, single subject searches over time, which is really useful information. But Google Trends has more options for search parameters. And one that I find particularly useful is searching by region. So this isn't limited by Canada, but I did use Canada in my example here. So you can see here I've used two regions uh, under the search terms at the top, uh, which are BC and Quebec. 
And if you're selling to individual stores across the country or even to multiple countries, this is useful information in terms of who is searching for travel books. Uh, we can see that people in BC search for it 11% more often than people in Quebec. Now, obviously, there's more information we can go into here. Maybe there's a language difference. I didn't look up how, I don't know French. I didn't look up how many people are searching for travel books in French. But this is useful information and just an example. It's also useful for any marketing folks in the room. Uh, finding regions where a subject or author is popular is a really good way to choose where to target Google AdWords campaigns. Another tool on Google Trends I want to mention, in, particularly, in particular for the publishing folks in the room, as well as the sales team, is looking at what time of year spikes in topics or trends occur. Most people in the room probably have a hockey book on their list. When you pick your pub date, consider looking at Google Trends to see how early people are thinking about the NHL when the season starts picking up. Or when pe preparing for the holidays throughout the year, you can check when people start searching for books related to that day. So for example, on this slide, you can see here there are a few spikes every year when searching for books for mom. And unsurprisingly, they hit just before Mother's Day and Christmas. This is over the last four years, and I've used four years here so that we can see if there are consistent trends around the same time every year. So the biggest Christmas spike for this search in 2016 was from December 11th to 17th, when Christmas was on a Sunday. In 2017, the spike for this search term started December 17th to 23rd, when Christmas was on a Monday. So aside from the fact that in 2017, many people started looking for books for their moms very late, we also have a range to look at when consumers are starting to consider to buy books for their moms and how close to Christmas they're actually shopping. This can help you if you're setting pub dates, setting up marketing or targeted ads, or if you're planning ebook or p-book promotions, or if you're selling and want to show your buyer why the timing for the book that you're selling is perfect. Another seasonal example I wanted to highlight is beach reads. I know it's been chilly this week, but I think we can't all wait for our summer reading time. So in the office, we think about what people might like to read during their time off, what types of books are fun and enjoyable if you're planning a day in the beach or in the sun. And from what I can tell, we plan most of those lists for the beginning of summer. And we sell saying things like, this will be perfect to take to the cottage, or this is exactly right for a summer beach day. But the consumer isn't on the exact same schedule as us. You can see here that there are def some definite spikes during the year, but not as much during the summer as you might think. Perhaps this is because they don't need to search for it. There's already lots of merchandising about summer beach days, and they know where the reads are and what they should be reading. But it's important to note these spikes over the last four years. So what we can see here, consum consumers are searching for beach reads in February, a lot in March and April, and May. Of course, people are also searching for them in June and July, not quite as high for some of it, and not as consistently as February, March, and April. So of course, beach reading campaigns and selling points are useful for the times of year that we expect, as well as August. But as you can see, those spikes are lower. So it's something to keep in mind that people are searching for these titles during colder times of the year. And this is a really good opportunity to think about these things critically. So should we be publishing more beach reads during March and April? Should we be marketing books for this genre during this time of year? Could, we, could this help us schedule more ebook promotions? Should we be merchandising our backlist for people going on vacation rather than just the summer season? When we're selling titles in March and April, we can use this data as a selling point. We can say that people are looking for something to take on vacation or for a book that will make them feel like they're on vacation. I have a couple more short points about Google Trends because it's a very versatile tool and it's worth exploring what you can do with it no matter what department you're in. So here's a few more random hints for anyone in the room who might need them before we finish talking about Google Trends. You can also search by YouTube search rather than a straight Google search to see if a subject lends itself better for video content, and that could be a very useful marketing tool. When searching for a topic, scroll down to the related topics section. This will give you some useful keywords and related items that you can build to use to build your title information sheets, keywords for marketing, or can help you find comps when you're selling in. Also, be specific when you're typing in your search terms. If you just type Swift, you'll be getting results on the popularity of the word Swift, uh, as well as Swift, the programming language, Jonathan Swift and his modest proposal, and Taylor Swift. So as you type your search, there will be prompts that come in a drop-down menu to make it more specific. So make sure you take a peek at that and see if you can refine your search at all. I also wanted to take some time to talk about social media, because this is another way of gathering information for selling purposes that goes beyond just data and numbers. 
So in my mind, big data means huge piles of information that you have to sift through in order to find the parts that matter. And I include social media in that. There are tons of applications for using social media to market your book. Advertising, organic social media posts, Reddit and Twitter AMAs, author engagement, there's lots of options. But I am not in marketing, so I'm not talking about those. But as a salesperson, I do find social media is a useful place to gather information that will help during the sales process. So Reddit in particular is a useful place to get a pulse on the world's book lovers, see what they're talking about, thinking about, worried about, and what they're all reading. There isn't really a way to filter this data by country because it's basically a huge network of forums. But you can see here there are subreddits sorted by subjects and discussions. And there are tons more subreddits available uh, sorted by series or authors or discussion types. So that's definitely something worth exploring. And this is just like a small snippet of a really, really long list that I didn't want to put on here. If you're browsing subreddits regularly, watching what goes by, you can also gain a lot of understanding about trends. I absolutely recommend following many book-related subreddits so that when you go to sell a title, you know what readers are thinking about and what they're discussing based on books, topics, and genres. And you can also see what books keep popping up as evergreens that people will buy and read, no matter how old the book is. You can also use all social media channels to do this. Uh, you can follow popular book hashtags, follow influencers and channels that amalgamate posts from readers. You can keep an eye on Pinterest lists and Twitter trends. Watch for ones that are more relevant to your book, uh, your book's subject, or your books in general. Don't forget to watch your author's social media channels, because lots of authors have a huge reach and are in touch with people who are already interested in what they're writing. So look at their feed, who they interact with, what sort of conversations the people who interact with them are having. Also remember to explore Goodreads. See how people review books. Look at the stars on popular or similar books. You can often find comp titles while looking at similar books when you find them list sorry, on lists of shelved books uh, with similar titles. So pay attention and you can get a lot of information scrolling through your own social media channels. And this will also help you in your own research about the titles that you're selling or the lists that you're building, but it'll also help position it to your buyer. So I wanna go back to the part at the beginning about content and building a sales picture uh, about content. So now this isn't exactly data related, but I think it pulls together a really nice complete picture. And we've looked at the author's backlist already and comp comparative titles. And we've seen the extra data to show us whether or not that subject is popular among book buyers and among Canadians. But the fi final piece to preparing to sell a book is to remember that we're not selling a static item. The beauty of publishing is that we're selling something with varied content inside of it. So I want to spend a little time talking about content and going with your gut. So if you're like me, you're working in publishing because you love books, you love reading, and you love stories and maybe what you're selling doesn't match what you prefer to read, but you understand the place that each book has on your shelf, whether it's a bestseller or a quieter title. The importance of this skill as a salesperson cannot be understated. Since we're selling varied content, being able to judge a book is a skill worth honing. And part of this comes from reading a lot, <clears throat> understanding quality and genre of what you're looking at, and also some of it comes from being open-minded. If you don't read a lot of sci-fi, talk to people who do. Did you know that really gritty, hardcore sci-fi has a huge following? or that Dungeons & Dragons is seeing a resurgence in both popular culture and in the game itself. Or that while you might feel like the market is too full of books about terraforming Mars, non-publishing people who read this genre are still clamoring for more. All this is related to understanding the content you're reading, but all, it's also related to gut feelings. So remember that you can significantly influence the positioning of your book in a store or in the market based on your pitch and your passion. So if you enjoy your book, Go tell your buyers. Go out of your way to show them that this isn't just part of your pitch, but that you genuinely enjoyed the content that you read. And as publishing progresses, new books, genres, stories, and formats will all appear. So when these stories come up and a book is difficult to, to compare, or it's hard to explain on paper or via your title information sheet, have people read the book. Share the manuscript or an arc with your buyers. You might not be able to find a comp that's close enough to the book, but in my experience, being enthusiastic about it is a, makes a significant difference. So remember that books are meant to be enjoyed. They're not written by robots looking for profit, yet. And authors and editors put so much time and energy into their work, so people will get something valuable, valuable out of it. And if that works on you, that is worth mentioning in your, as much as a comp title or a sales pattern in your pitch. So now that we've gathered all of this information, data, selling points about what, the title that you're selling, we'll talk about the actual selling part. As I've said before, you're not just selling a product that's static. Each book is different, and my personal philosophy is to sell each book like you're teaching a class. 
So we all have heard about different learning styles, how teachers can cater to many of their students' needs by teaching with multiple tactics in mind. The way people take in information is really varied and there's an important lesson in that for sales. People learn in a multitude of ways. Some people learn by seeing or reading and some learn best by doing or feeling. And others just need to hear something to understand it. So remember that your buyers are people with different learning styles and preferences. It never hurts to hit a few of these learning styles when pitching them titles. So instead of lecturing for your hour-long appointment, show them samples, give them excerpts to read, send displays and videos. Make sure you're having a conversation rather than a lecture. Show them the research that you've been doing. Find the ones that are most relevant to what you're pitching and see what they think about it. I think the different, the different learning styles relates to books as much as it relates to buyers. Books have different strengths and weaknesses, and that's what makes selling them so dynamic. So sell your books based on their strengths. One thing I've noticed salespeople do is that they sell all their books in the same way each time. It's easy to get into a habit of writing the same notes for your buyers or repeating the same information. But if you sell every book with, this is the title, the author, and the plot, that gets monotonous. So my advice for you is to let the book sell itself a little bit. Think about why a customer will want to buy it. Is it the author? Is it the gorgeous cover? Or is it part of a series that they love? Is it a really good price? Is the topic timely or unique? Focus your notes, your research, and your pitch based on the strengths of the book itself and the features that you think are most important. Layer in the data you found, book net reports, Google Trends, things you've noticed on social media or online. Put it all on paper and communicate the most relevant details. So I know this was a lot of information and a lot of data to take in, so I've made a one sheet of the steps go to, of the steps to pulling together all of that data and getting ready to sell your book. And I thought we'd go through kind of all the thoughts and considerations that those steps require while looking at a real example. People who know me know this is one of my favorite books from last year, so I'm sure they're not surprised, but Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse came out in June 2018. I thought this would be a fun example for our case study since it's so relevant, so recent, and so good. So, the first step is to start looking at the basic data that's available to you. Look at the author's previous titles, how well they sold, which ones sold better than others, see if you can figure out why, what time of year was it published, was it a better cover, a more timely topic or storyline. So for Trail of Lightning, this was a debut novel, so we don't have data on previous novels. However, she has written short stories and articles, and while gathering information on Trail of Lightning, I discovered that her short story, Welcome to Your Authentic Indian Experience, had just been nominated for multiple awards. So we've added that to our list of information. So then we move on to comparative titles. When we look at these, here's what we think about. How well did they sell? If it's your title and you have the data, figure out which stores and markets it sold best in. How is it positioned? How should your book be positioned based on this information? Does the comparative number make you want to pitch more or less of your book? How does your book measure against this competition? So I looked up comps for Trail of Lightning. I found a lot of dystopian, fantasy, and sci-fi titles, but there wasn't one that was quite right. Trail of Lightning was described in the tip sheet as an indigenous Mad Max Fury Road. So I wanted to capture that in my pitch. The book is about a woman who's a monster hunter. She lives on a reservation on post-apocalyptic Earth. She works with a local man she just met. He's a gorgeous medicine man. They battle dark beings. They're recognizable uh, as part of indigenous folklore and mythology. So I pulled together comps that would reflect all of these aspects, post-apocalyptic, monster hunters, badass women who fight, and folklore. So we've added comparative titles to our pitch, and the picture's starting to look better. But there's still more we can do to pitch this title, and the next step is to start gathering research. So at this point, we talk to our co-workers, find out what marketing and publicity have planned for this book, find out what they think about it based on what they're hearing from their contacts, whether they're media contacts, influencers, or people they're seeing on social media. Find out how well similar books have performed in the past. This was one of our US titles that we distributed, so I looked to the US plans for marketing and publicity and noted that for my pitch. I also flagged it with our in-house teams to make sure it was something that they had noticed in case they found marketing and publicity opportunities, noted their responses for my pitch as well, and made sure to include our marketing plans uh, and shared that with my buyers. So at this stage, I then moved on to BookNet's research and reports. And the questions we consider here are things like, what does the market range look like? Is this subject growing or shrinking? Does the format match the common format for this subject? Is the price within the range of what people will pay for books on this subject? How will this book measure against the top 10? So for Trail of Lightning, uh, this is under the BISAC 4 dystopian fiction. 
and that's not on the Canadian Book Market Report. So I looked at the science fiction category as well as fantasy on the Canadian Book Market Report just to get a baseline. And then I went into sales data and ran some reports to see what the top titles were under this dystopian BISAC code. And that seems to be getting pretty popular. So that was really helpful for me to see uh, what titles were uh, evergreen titles and what came back more and more. And there was a lot of information there. So now that we have publishing specific data, we're ready to take our research to the next level. At this point, we check Google Trends to get a better grasp on what people are looking for. Search by country or region you're selling into. Use comparisons when, uh, to find better keywords or trends. Look for regional or seasonal trends by searching over multiple years. Look at related topics and queries to see what people are searching for and thinking about. And remember that search terms don't exactly equal sales, but that this is a good tool for research and following trends. So Trail of Lightning was a tough one to pin down. There's a lot of search trends we can look at. So I searched for Indigenous authors to see if there's growth there, and there's absolute growth there with a lot of spikes. Um, but there's also a lot of room for growth, which was really encouraging and helped spike the number a little bit for my pitch. And it's clear that more people are searching for these authors, uh, but it was interesting to note that the growth was faster in the US. So I also looked at the popularity of dystopian books, which has remained pretty consistent over the last five years. I also searched for the author, Rebecca Roanhorse, but that didn't actually return any results. And I believe that uh, Google Trends doesn't return any results if the search term is too small. Uh, so that actually was encouraging as well, because there's room in Canada to grow her name and make her a bigger name in dystopian books. So it looks like there's a lot of growth in this field available, but it also looks like novels in this category might not be as big as other categories like historical fiction or thrillers. So this helped inform the number that I was beginning to form. So let me get to the social media portion. In general, my recommendations for this section of research is to pay attention on social media. What are readers talking about? What are they concerned about or what excites them? What are non-readers talking about? Does the book you're selling answer a question they're asking or contribute to the conversation? What are people reading? What are the evergreen titles? Which books do you see everywhere as, a word, of, as word of mouth grows? So there's tons available on this uh, online under this subject. There's a whole community of people on Twitter who share recommendations for books by Indigenous authors or about Indigenous mythology. On Reddit, there's posts highlighting favorites in the category and asking for recommendations. And one thing I wanted to mention here that was that it was important for me not to pigeonhole this book. I didn't want people who were just looking for books by Native authors. I wanted to make sure that my research and the points I was pulling together reminded my buyers that this hits multiple categories and does them really well. The action part of the book uh, it was really well done. The dystopian and world building aspects were really carefully planned. The main characters were really fun and badass and funny. This book had everything and I really wanted my sell in to reflect that. So at this point we consider all the information we've just found. Line it up with your reaction while reading the book. Is this a new favorite for you or for your office? Remember that your enthusiasm about a book can significantly help your pitch. So as I've said, Trail Lightning is a fantastic book. The main character is badass. She's moody and unapologetic about it. She's got a lot of history that's slowly revealed through the book. The pacing is perfect. Each character has their moment to shine. It's got a great mix of violence and action to exposition and dialogue. I was really hyped about this book, obviously. So I made sure that when I was pitching it, I let that shine through and had a conversation about that as much as I did about the data itself. So then at this point, we pitched the book. We assemble the information we've gathered, organize it so that it's being presented with the most relevant details, sell using what we have available, uh, like samples, excerpts, uh, and highlight the parts of the book that are the strongest to let the book shine. So at this point, I made sure to bring samples of the cover because the cover art is gorgeous, and I wanted my buyer to be able to see that the lightning on there uh, is shiny and catching. The titles the title and the author name is raised. The colors look really, really good in person. So I also sent ARCs so that they could read it. I brought information on the awards that the author, Rebecca, was nominated for and some that she had won already for her short stories. I talked about the comps, both book comps and non-book comps. I also made sure to mention all the trends it hit, like strong women, own voices, and dystopian stories. I brought in all of my data in my research and had a conversation about how much I loved the book and how well it fit into what readers are looking for right now. So that's how I sold this book in. It was only a year ago, but the word of mouth has caught on a bit, and that's really val validating. Everyone I've spoken to who has read it has had similar reactions to me, and the enthusiasm for this book is contagious. It's gotten a onto a lot of listicles and best of lists. The author has been on LeVar Burton's podcast. Trail of Lightning is currently a Nebula finalist, so it's also one that I'm still obviously highly recommending to everybody. 
So putting together all the research might sound like a lot of data, and the extra information will set you up with a fully realized pitch and a well-rounded data-driven suggested buy. Your numbers will be accurate and purposeful, and you'll have answers to any questions your buyers have about the consumers who will be buying this book. Ultimately, I think that this approach will help you find the right balance between data and enthusiasm for the books that you're reading and selling.